guess what? I'm having a meeting with him on Thursday to talk to him about coming to EXP. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm listening to what his business is. He doesn't really do business. He only does buyers when he, when he has some time. He's really an investor and uses his license as an investor. So as much as this is an opportunity for me to build real estate, it's also an opportunity to go to him and say, hey, by the way, you know that ad that you were doing? I've got like six or eight people in your backyard that I don't really want to be driving in your backyard to service them because you're in Hungarian County. Would you mind if I gave those to you? Well, yeah, that'd be great. How do you do that? Would you mind if I did that on a regular basis? Oh, that'd be fantastic. I said, great. Why don't we have lunch on Tuesday? Okay, great. Not even, not even a hiccup of, uh, I don't know. Okay. So by the way, 9,000 impressions, 6,000, 10%, right? In this case, it's 1% because it's re the reach, all right? So what is the difference between an impression and a reach and a, re and a result? Anybody know? An impression is I showed the ad to somebody. They met the criteria that I told the system to say, only show it to these people on this day and this time. By the way, I shut this ad off at like 9 o'clock because I got tired of my phone going ping, 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 ping. So it was off between 9 o'clock and like 10 o'clock the next morning because I was actually overwhelmed. Which told me I need to hire exactly what he said, two more buyer agents, that one guy that just does that. Okay? By the way, or would you be okay if you had more leads than time? Yeah. Okay? So, next thing is the reach. What is the reach? That means that those are the people that actually clicked on it and actually wanted more information. What is the result? The result is when I interacted with them. And they filled out the Facebook form, which actually, in this ad, it says message me. Right? They click the button and it says a message, and my bot says, hey, thanks for checking in with us. By the way, what area are you looking to go to? And the ad says, message me your rent. Right? Message me the amount you're paying in rent. So 60 people said, hey, here's my rent. So even though this is 250, here's where it gets interesting. In this, now I'm going to take it down one more level, right? So what am I doing? Let's talk about compliance, right? The fact that your realtor said that you're getting the leads, right? Are you even complying with US Bank? Absolutely. Yeah, right. You're not the ones going out here soliciting. They're the one, right. number one, building opportunity, looking for leads, right? We're complying. We're not posting anything on social media about US Bank or anything like that. We're here to, ready? What am I doing, by the way? You got to become a support staff for what he's doing, mm -hmm. right? So that's when you go out to talk about what are you doing, right? Ask your realtor, your business referring partner, what are you doing? And if Sean's doing this, how many other people are doing this? Right? Dude, I'm not a genius. I've gotten better at it. There's a guy, he knows him. He's one of my best friends in the business. And Jeff Quinn. Jeffrey will do 450 transactions this year. By himself, he'll probably do 80. He's got a team now in two different states. But Jeffrey, and the difference between Jeff and I, my wife would always say, what is it? Like, you're smarter than him. What is what is wrong with you? Like, are you do you need like different medication? <laughs> do you need to go back to school? She even talked to James and what the hell's wrong with him? Right? What, what I figured out is the difference between Jay, Jay, um, difference between Jeff and I was up until about two years ago, if you said Jeff, do this, he would do it until the cows came home. Until his fingers were bleeding. Until he had, until he banged his head against the wall so many times it just hurt. And I was analytical, so I would go, "There's a better way to do that." And by the time I got done building a better mousetrap to do what he was doing, that process and that system and that that way of generating business changed, and it was gone. So by being analytical, really, and I, I am a, by the way, I'm in patent, I am a patented inventor in the United States government. I, the thing that's on my desk, that little yellow thing, I am patent on it. The problem is, I'm not proud of it anymore. Because I realized that it could have been, it would have been easier just to take somebody else's bike lock as opposed to investing all that time. I mean, bear in mind, that got me into real estate. Mm -hmm. But how many times do we invest time and effort to go recreate a wheel that's already running? You don't need to. I don't, you know, now I'm, I'm building things that are ahead of the system. So here's the point we just talked about is what James just said was, where do you guys get involved? Here. Is what they call top of funnel. What's the top of the funnel? Any idea what that is? I'm tired of renting. Right? That's the top of the funnel. I'm getting eyeballs of people that are renting. 
How many people do you think rent in the United States? Too many. Uh, right? Top of funnel. And then the, I'm in the marketplace, by the way, with the millennials, I, mean, I don't know if you guys see all those buildings that can be built. Mm -hmm. They're not buying. By the way, huh, any idea what the rent is in Hoboken right now for a two bedroom? Oh gosh, it's gotta be over three thousand dollars. Four thousand. Yeah. How much of a house can you buy for four thousand dollars? We just did the math. Roughly. Four fifty? Four hundred, yeah. Four fifty? Right. Guess what you can buy for four fifty in Morristown? You could probably get sixteen to eighteen you get sixteen to eighteen hundred square feet in Morris Plains. Maybe not in Morristown proper, but in Morris Plains you'll get You'll get you'll get between 18 to 2,400 square feet, and by the way, that is four times the amount of houses they're going to get in Hoboken. There's an epidemic, right? And, you know, the millennials are, are known for say, "Hey, I don't want to rent." Believe it or not, they're the they're probably like one of the toughest consumer to deal with right now. At the end of the day, you know, it's not like when, when I was growing up and children grow up, the first thing was growing up to buy home, buy home, buy home. Now the parents says, so oh, no. Great card. Yeah, I mean, uh, great card don't. What does he and tell then, people? And then, and then what's happening is, you know, you got a big issue where, where number one, you know, the need to want, right? When we're in my generation and in our generation, we want these big houses, big yards. Probably more. Now we want small houses, just something more manageable, because we don't want to work for a house. Right. But what they don't understand is they're willing to pay. 3500 4000 so 2500 but they're missing an opportunity of where this is. And, you know, one thing, I mean, we talk about interest rate, three and eight. You understand the buying power that these buyers, and we don't have a passion. You see, we are saying they have a passion, and we don't have a passion for that business. Let me ask you, I've been doing this for 27 years. I have buyers that, the other day I went to a car and met up with Mr. Bernardus, I put them into their first home they bought. And they, the first thing you saw me was giving a big hug. Mm -hmm. Right? His mortgage is only $100,000 right now. What they're looking to do is sell the Arlington Ridge right in Kearney. They're looking to sell that and buy a bigger home. So this way, number one, all the kids will stay, stay together. So now all the kids are working now. They got jobs. They got you know, credit, they got everything. Mm -hmm. So my point to you is this. I had a passion back then. I, sh I get people into home. I still have that passion because I get that customer. Why do I get so much repeat the business? These people know what I did right by them, mm -hmm. right? They did a $100,000 mortgage, and now the value of Orange and Rigs, $250,000. Do you remember, do you remember? Let me, points out, let me just point something out to you guys. You just hit on something. I'm just going to, I'm going to, I want to close you guys out with this. I have a call at 1.30. Um, first of all, where can you help? In the middle of the funnel. And what do I mean by that? The middle of the funnel is when the guy gives us an email or a phone number, okay? And as a realtor, I really don't have time to go through 60 people, right? Because I'm not, and remember what I said to you guys? For every one deal that I'm going to do, right, at an open house, right, Remember I talked about this with the guys with the yellow signs because I'm not going to talk about brands because I can get in trouble for that. <laughs> but if you had a big yellow sign in Morris County, for every one house that I'm going to do, every one person that comes through the door in an open house, right? Let's say 10 people come through. One person is going to buy a house in the next 90 to 180 days. Guess how many people are going to do a mortgage in the next 90 to 180 days? Three to four. Guess what? In the next 12 months, Maybe three on my side. Next 12 months, seven. So if I got 60 people that inquired, and I got 12 people that responded, actually it's more, it's 15. So it's 25%. So right, David, remember? 100, 100 people. In this case, it was 60. It was nine, it was uh, 6,000. I got 60, right, 1%. Mm -hmm. Of that, I got 15 that gave me information. I guarantee you of the 15, it's going to be one to three people are going to do something in the next 90 days. By the way, I'm the realtor. Of these 15, how many people do you think are going to do a mortgage in the next 90 days? Remember this number? What's the numbers here? What's the number here? What's the difference? What's mine? 
when people talk to me about the mortgage business versus the real estate business, I always say three to one. So if you tell me that a mortgage rep is doing ten million dollars a year, he's a, he, he's useless. Don't misinterpret that. He's an amateur. Because in my book, if you're doing ten million in real estate business, you're doing pretty good. You're doing thirty deals a year, 25, 30 deals a year in our area. You're writing loans, okay? The mortgage rep in order to do that same amount of business is only doing a third. So for doing the same amount of effort, they should be doing three times as much. So if that's the case, guess what? If you filter through my leads and I say to you, you can call through them, just let me know who's real. But guess what? Are you going to throw the ones that are away that are right the ones that are going to do something today? No. You're going to stay in touch with them. You might even do a refinance because they may say, you know, by the way, I already own a home. I didn't even go on. I didn't even touch that. Do you know that of the people that own a home that come through an open house, any idea what the percentages that own a home? They're pretty high. 35%. Wow. 35% of the people that call me on the sign own a home. You know what the conversation is? Hey, I was calling about that house over there. Great. Guess what? With, with caller ID nowadays, in some cases their address pops up. And I always ask them, I go, yeah, it's great. You know, it's a, well, while I'm looking for that price, I know what the price is. It's my house. I own it. It's my listing, it's also my house, but I know what the price is. I'll say, you know, Ashley, while I got you on the phone, while I'm looking for that, by the way, are you thinking of buying a home or selling a home? Well, I'm calling about that house. I get that, but it seems like you're in the area. It sounds like you know the area pretty well. Are you, well, you, well, actually, yeah, we live in the area. We're thinking about selling our house. Great. Why not, if, if you were able to sell your house today, we have to guarantee it. Can I meet with you for 10 minutes? Sure. Great. Now, by the way, the only reason I know to ask that question is because I know my numbers. So if I give you a bucket of leads, like James said, are you in compliance if I say, hey, can you call through my leads and ask if they want to get a loan? Mm -hmm. Sure. By the way, do you guys notice those two, those two stations next to my desk, across from my desk? Any, anybody notice when I bring my desk up and I stand up with it? The middle of my desk comes up and I stand and I talk on the phone? Right? If you haven't, you should check it out. Kelly's been on the call with me and Michael doing more calls with people. I get on the phone for two hours a day still, by the way, just you knowing people are like, you know, I'm really busy. Great. I'm really busy too, by the way. I worked out this morning at, at 5 o'clock. I came here. I prepared for this. I went. I prepared a comparative market analysis for a, a property in Roselle. I'm oh, sorry, Roselle Park on a commercial property. It's not easy to do. Put together a 40-page document, got in the car, drove there, came back, talked to my assistant, negotiated a deal on the way back, talked to, a, talked to the owner of the place. And then I also talked to the, 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 the attorney. I came in, bullshitted with him for a few minutes. I talked to Kelly, and now we're doing this presentation. So if you think you're, if you think you're busy, come hang out with me for about four minutes. Okay? And I don't mean that to impress you, but I bet you you did the same thing with James. And you say, hey, I want to spend time. I want to shadow you. You want to embarrass yourself sometimes? There's two ways to do it. Find somebody who's really busy and who's a top producer. You just follow them around. Don't say anything. Follow them around with a notebook. The second way is, what my mentor used to tell me, is a guy named Michael Vance, who was the guy, Walt Disney's creative director, who passed away. They modeled it after, after Goofy was the joke. Mm -hmm. You know what he used to say? Stand in, stand in front of the mirror naked. He go, it's a reality check, believe me. <laughs> right? So this is where you can help. And how do you do that, by the way? Do you go into James and say, hey, James, give me all your leads. I'm going to take them home, and I'm going to go work on them. No. If I was a mortgage rep, guess what? I'd say, hey, you know, I noticed you have an extra desk over there. Would you mind if I sat there with my laptop and called through your leads? This way, if I get somebody alive, I can just hand you the phone. By the way, why do I know that works? Done it. I've taken his mortgage rep, put him in my office that I used to have in Jersey City, and had the guy do $3 million of one month. Why? And if you guys want to take that on, you're more than welcome. I actually put it, and James remembers this. The first guy he sent me, I threw him out. I used to have a call center. And the kid, he would do that. I put the phone down. We had two phones, one here and one here. He put down his pen, down his pencil, down his other pencil. I said, oh, wait, went sharper in his pencil. Now my desk is over here. And I'm watching this whole thing, and I go, what are you doing? I walk over. I go, here, put this headset on. I take the receiver, and now we have two headsets. We have one on each ear. I take the receiver off this one, I take the receiver off that one. He goes, oh, puts his fingers on the thing. I go, you want to make that stop? He goes, yeah. I go, dial. Oh. <laughs> right? So I leave him. He puts the receivers back. 
I go back to my desk. He takes one receiver off. He goes, oh, shit. That's a broken thing. I'm going to go sharpen it. <laughs> right? Comes back. I walk over. And if you haven't figured it out, I get a little passionate. Show on typical fashion. James will attest to this. I walk over and take the receivers. By the way, old school, they had receivers and wires on them. Right? They weren't wireless. Okay. Unplug the receivers. Throw them across the room. And now the headsets are on and the, the, the receivers are up. So guess what you hear is, you hear the dial tone in both ears. I go, you want to make it go away? Either dial or get out. By the way, for me to get him out of my prospecting area, I would have to call my assistant because she was under a directive that do not open the door because the lock was on the outside of the door. Do not open the door until 11.30. If you do, I will fire you. To the point where Jim Weicker came to my office, knocked on the door, and said, and she said, like, doing jumping jacks. And I actually am throwing erasers at the door because I'm, I'm prospecting. So how did that guy do $3 million? I said to him, here is 600 people that I've actually sold houses to in the past 10 years. Call them up and see if they want to refine them. And then when all he does, I was referring to you by Sean, mm -hmm. right? It's a soft introduction, and we just banked it away. And, you know, look again. What is it what I was talking about, by the way. This is exactly... Hey, Sean, I'm going to be asking you. You get some interesting... Oh, don't call me again. I don't want to talk to Sean. I, I, like... I told like, you, you yeah. have few conversations. How many so, how many calls so you You know, there was a, oh, yeah, sure. So he's great, blah, blah, blah. Oh, he was struggling to just evaluate your mortgage, right? So, again, those are the conversations. He said, wait till so long. Sean just want to make sure. And what I, what, what we do is also making Sean look good, right? Dude, you know what I, I How does it make Sean look good? Because Sean cared enough for them to go through the health check on the mortgages. Dude, Sean asked me to come in today because he, to wanted, save me you call, money. he yeah. wanted me to call all his customers because we've actually, I just told him that the rates came down to 3.1%. I mean, holy crap. I'm not sure what your rate is, but he wanted me to make sure I call all of his customers to let him know. So, 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 does that, so let's wrap this up because I know you got to go. I got a 130. He has a 130 call. So, the bottom line is this, right? We're going to create, that's the reason why we'll build this office out. And you saw those two desks standing. That was the whole purpose of that. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is create a talent center. And I know the phone reception is terrible. So what I did was, I actually, we have Wi Fi in here. Right now, we have a Wi Fi in here right now. Mm -hmm. So you want to create, you want to be able to, on your iPhone, you should be able to do Wi Fi dialing. And so this way, you'll be nice and clear by the time you call the customer. So you don't lose interruption. So this way, number one, there's Wi Fi in there. We're trying to create all this, by the way. So this way, you guys have all the tools and rights and everything you do. And the bottom line is this. Sean is nice enough to say, hey, I'll give them leads. Let them convert it. At the end of the day, any conversation when you start dialing, and I'd love for you guys to come in there at least one hour, right? Just sit with Sean individually, right? And start dialing for the dollar. You're going to see. By the way, I'm on the phone, too. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not hawking you. I... And he will tell you, I've done it, where I can, by the way, I'm like your mom. If you're on the phone having a conversation with somebody, I know what the other conversation is. I know what the other side of that conversation sounds like. Just from the way you're reacting. I don't have to I don't have to hear it. People are like, oh, I'm going to patch myself into the call. I'm like, you don't have to. Well, what, I, what, what he does is, like, by the way, it's also critique, right? Because at the end of the day, I mean, I, it's funny to think we went to Vegas, and we went to a top fairy thing. My, my you sign my fairy thing. So he turns around, we go in there. I'm thinking, ah, this is great. We're in Las Vegas, we're party, blah, blah. <laughs> so we go out there, all right? <laughs> and also go to Tom Ferry, and also I'm sitting there for a whole, ready? The whole morning, oh, I was doing five, five, five hours. hours. So <laughs> the first five hours, my back was stiffening up. We were standing yeah, the whole time. Nice. That's what I'm saying. One hour, by the way, you guys could do. But five hours standing there, five hours is. Like, so, the next, so the next day, I put the massage and took I went to the other side. By the way, I couldn't do what he did. The, so it was a two day uh, session yeah, calling. Yeah. I only went to the first day, second day, sorry, my back is killing me. Basically, the first day call for 12 hours. Yeah. Do you remember what the results were? The results were unbelievable. I actually got uh, I said, about I five said, or six customers problems. doing refinances and purchase pre qualification. I actually did three loans from the uh, refinances we got. And what we did was contact his past customers. By the way, oh, wow. I that said, was the lead I said 18, I said 18 appointments. Totally to stay. Some of those customers are still my customers. Okay. And by the way, there was me, there was me, him, and 30 of the people in the room. And one of the guys in the room said, 
oh, but you know, it's not, in my area, it's different. I said, really? And we were joking about it. I said, watch this. I, and I was, I've been trained by those guys for years. So Tom goes, hey, show him. I took his phone. I took his calls. I actually called the guy up in his neighborhood and said, hey, Mr. Jones, blah, 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 I'm Tom Jones, right? What the guy I didn't realize was I set an appointment for him to go to go list the trailer. Because in his neighborhood, they were, it, it was like trailers. So oh, you, 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 are, you are the last one, right? They call reluctant, right? That's the person that you blew out had called reluctant. First thing I went, when I said, yeah, hey, just stop calling. Start having a conversation. Give me a bit of conversation. And what I use is, uh, because I'm using his contact list, I'm using his name. First thing, right? Because they already know Sean, right? And then you hear some great stuff, you hear some terrible stuff, you just went, oh, I'm so sorry you feel that way. However, I just want to reach out to you to see how I can assist. But no, no, thank you. All right, have a great day. Thank you. Boom. Next one. Right? I'm going to leave you guys with this because I got an appointment. All right. Does. So I have a list of 15 people. There's some of them are crap. Some of them are like in the low rent districts. The great news is like my assistant Abby like, you really want to give them that? I said, yeah, because if you're practicing on those people and they blow up, they don't care. They're not, you know, they're not like high end. But the funny thing is, those people will become bigger people at some point. So, any so, so, so the trick is this, by the way, and this is your homework, by the way, my homework to you, right? In the next week, I want you to identify a business reform partner to come sit with you and Sean to see how we could benefit your business. Pick one. Pick one with One business partner. Set a meeting for Sean. Okay. Say, look, this is yeah. invite them. Invite them into to the office. No, into the into this meeting. Yeah, into this meeting for the next one. One, one business partner, and this will we talk about what is a great business. Just you, do you think this will help you guys out? Do you think the fact that all the stuff he's talking about will put them into a different perspective? Will you think will bring value to that? One. By the way, um, my job is to make you guys look as good as you can look. My job is not to, my job is not to hard sell or try to recruit or anything like that. My job in that particular scenario is to validate that you're the person who should be working with. So, one, this is fun. That's your homework. You can bring them over. Bill the Penny is a great guy to bring you. Uh, Bill, come on. Now we're discussing Billy a little bit. It doesn't matter. You might change that attitude. I'll give it a shot. You understand what I'm saying? Good, I'll find right? a new one. We want, we want a tough one, right? You want we want a, a tough yeah. one because at the end of the day, by the way, if they sit there and see what we have been doing, what can we do bring value to people, it's, I'm going to be asking you, you're not going to have an issue. I know you got to go. So no, I know. I'm what just going to say is that guy, Billy, you want to get him? You know how you get him? You bring his number one competitor in, and you get him off the map. And he'll turn around and say, what you do? Oh my God, what you do to that guy? You don't have to tell him you're getting his number one. Identify one person. That's all I'm asking for your homework is. Thank you. Next Hello. week, identify one Thank business partner. Okay. Are they ready? Show them what we can do to bring value, right? That works. Guys, I'll see you. All right, now you got it. Good luck to you at 2 o'clock. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies. Yeah, so keep an eye on them. Good guy.